What's up, fit, sexy people? This is Mind Pump. Hey, would you like to win free access to maps, power lift? Of course you would. Here's what you gotta do. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours we post this video. Make it a good comment. Also, subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, you get free access to maps, power lift. I know you look good now. Imagine how good you'll look after you follow that program. One more thing before we start the podcast. We are running a promotion. Maps Anabolic is 50% off, and our Shredded Summer Bundle is 50% off. You can find those two programs and the bundle at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code April Special. All right, enjoy the podcast. Did you guys end up coming in and working out this morning? Is that true? No, I didn't. I didn't. I know, I know you didn't. I just I've been skipping him. my. I just work- want you to say it. I've been, <laughs> skip- I've been skipping my workouts lately. Well, you didn't hear me slamming weights while you're in your interview. Were you, were you I, working out? No, I didn't. Not yeah, I didn't. Today I took a day off. Yeah, yeah we, you guys are on the before program. We sat. Yeah, we're on the before. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to get too buff, you know. Yeah, it's too yeah. intimidating. Yeah, I you know. know? You we're know? we're I so know. much stronger. I, there, I, I I overcame that fear. Well, plus mm. I feel like you're less insecure when I'm not as buff. You know what I'm saying? If I'm, I get really, you're doing it for me. Yeah, I'm doing it for you. Yeah. <laughs> the show is better because he does of think, it. think of you in that yeah. regard. It's your handsome face that bothers me. So. Well, yeah, and the combination. If I was the jacked guy of the group oh, right man. now, it you know what? Dude, you're a very do, caring guy. I am. I'm I appreciate team, that very much. So it would just be too much. Team player. It's just too much. We can't have you be too handsome. Yeah. Ah, no. It's what is it? Off day. Uh, uh kind just, no. I need to lift today, so I need to. Lift. I'll probably lift when I get home today. So I, well, I came in. I got in a little late today. Late start. Uh, probably I was probably about twenty minutes. Well, twenty minutes late to what our workout would be. And I knew you were interviewing with our our boy Mike Matthews, which it's gonna go long. Yeah. So I was yeah, just exactly. like, I was in no hurry to get around today. I was like, yeah, Sal won't be lifting there. He's gonna be recording. Bro, with when Mike I talk, when I, when I talk to him, I'm like, oh. Someone else that could talk forever. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, I, I see now. Oh, hello. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, yeah. I have yeah. to interrupt him. He, yeah, yeah I was gonna say he might be worse than you. He might be. I think that with, with you, I think uh, you get why. Well, maybe that's because we're in person. You more, can right? self censor. Well, you know, yeah. he has better. Like uh, Sal has good social cues. Yeah. Like uh, Sal could be like rambling, and he can see the look on my face. It's like he's like, "Oh, Adam's over this conversation." Yeah. Okay, so then he wraps, he wraps. Well, it up. also, I mean, to give to be fair, Mike does his podcast by himself. Yeah, and I do with you guys. Right. So I've right. learned quite a bit, like when to like stop or whatever. He hasn't learned that. <laughs> so it so happens when you fly solo. So well, I, yeah, I, no, I, I cut him off all the time. But he, you know, he's so smart and he's so good. Oh, at he can speaking. go. Yeah. yeah, but but I did. I cut him off. Like, he'll be talking about, and, 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 and I have to do that, and then he's like stops, and then I go. I love to talk to Mike. So yeah. he's, he's got an incredible business mind too. Smart. Uh, yeah, very very. I very know, smart. He's, no, he's known on the web, obviously, for his fitness knowledge and stuff like that, but. I mean, he really was a, a brilliant internet marketer that saw the opportunity in the fitness space. Mm-hmm. Very similar yeah. to us. You yeah, know? And, and, and he's, he's good. He's a writer. And he, yeah. and he only writes what's <clears throat> what's proven, so he's very smart about that. doesn't make any crazy claims. Do you, you, know, you guys know he got COVID? Do you guys know that? I, I did know that. Yeah, uh-huh. dude. He, got, he was like barely sick for like three days. He said, yeah, he was congested for a few days, just a little bit, and then Did, it was gone. Didn't his whole family get it too, or did just he? Just him. Oh, it was just him. He was, yeah, he was, he was away from them. Oh. And you know, okay, so here's, th- this is a funny thing. By the way, this is, I'm not a doctor, so whatever. <laughs> uh, this is just people I know. I know someone who got the vaccine, and after the second dose, stayed home from work for three days. Yeah. yeah. Because they felt so bad, terrible migraines I and fever. I told you that was my brother. Yeah, yeah, same yeah. thing. And it and then Mike and then Mike was congested a little bit with yeah. actual COVID. Well, anecdotally too, and I know I don't know how you know if they've tested for this or whatever, but you know somebody in in really good health standing, like typically that I've seen that happen. The more people I've talked to about it, like their symptoms are pretty much nil. Mm. Did uh, you guys get a bunch of DMs after the J and J talk? Uh, no, I didn't. Did you? Oh yeah, I did. I thought I was surprised that you after guys, the vaccine, which is so weird because I wasn't the one that brought it up. Why do I get fucking bombarded with people telling You're me? Easy. Is that what it is? Yeah, easy to piss <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> this will get them going. Yeah. yeah. No, I, and Why, I, what was the what were they? Asking well, about? I know. I thought I thought you. I, I you know I guess I'll have to go back and listen to that episode and hear how you talked about it when you guys brought it up. Because I thought you, I don't. I, didn't I just said like, there was zealots on every side in there. Right, in I thought, effect. yeah, and, and that the messages I got were like, you know, to be fair, you know, you guys should share about J and J that this is actually really common and normal, and statistically speaking, it's not. Well, yeah, what the vaccine? There's like six no. cases out of like six million. Right. Oh no, I, they're I, like so they're in, so yeah, yeah, I agree. In fact, one person even compared it to like birth control. There's a higher risk of you using birth control yeah. than there is. No, this is the, taking here, this vaccine. No, here's the truth. The the so far. They've all the ones that are out so far have been proven to be extremely safe. 
um, and very effective. Now, the reason why I say so far is it's impossible mm -hmm. to know long-term effects uh, until we've done them for a long time, which yeah. which it's likely there's not going to be any, but we there you can't say for sure. We don't know until right. they've been around for a long time. That's all. That's all it is. And that's just based off of that's real data. Real uh, numbers. Yeah, no, I thought I thought you were I thought you were fair. You know, mm -hmm. I normally you know me, I'll normally jump in and say something if I think that you're being too biased about something. Yeah, I, I thought it was I thought it was a good. But comment. I do but like I do like. Of course, it's, everybody's it's very nuanced. Everybody yeah. gets triggered, dude. and yeah. I do like hearing people uh, who are healthy who get it and then don't get. It, just for my personal like, you know, because you guys know I'm a hypochondriac. Yeah. So I hear that I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, I'm at least as healthy as mine. Oh uh, yeah, I love hearing the stories. You know, people getting through it like nothing, like, well, like nothing happened. And speaking of things too that we covered, uh, money, monetary theory, quantitative easing. Quantitative Those easing. were the terms I was searching for. Quantitative you guys... easing just means uh, print money and th and then buy shit with it. Just inject the market with right, but the, fake money. Yeah, but the theory of that is that if you doing that grows the GDP by five to ten percent, that ne that negates the amount that they borrowed to do that in a sense. Or print, I should say. Mm. That's the theory. The theory is if, I like to call the that unicorn economics. I know. No, I mean anything that has quantum. Well, that's in it, hey, I'm listen. Lost. Those, are, those are the those. That's what directly opposes your economic philosophy. Is is MM, MMT is you know money monetary theory and yeah. quantitative quantitative easing, which is the idea that so long as when you print these bills, that it grows the GDP by X percent, that it negates the amount of money that you print. But really what that is, is that we're, that means that we just keep pushing this buy more, buy more, mm. buy more, which my challenge to that is, is that is that a good thing? Sure, to keep the economy afloat in the current state, but the, you know, the, re the religious the side of me goes, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if just pushing everybody to be consumers, consumers. Okay, is, so we is, have is to understand right route. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this helps, this helps me understand it, at least when it was told to me. So when you talk about the economy, what you're really talking about is the, per, the productive abilities of the, the people, right? So what are people producing? What are they innovating? Um, and are we becoming more efficient and are we becoming better at whatever we're doing? So if the economy grows, typically that's what you're, what you want from it. Okay. Now, if the economy grows because we're all, uh, obsessed with buying stuff, does that mean we're better off? I don't think so. Right. I don't think so. I think we're better off when people are healthy mentally, physically, yeah, spiritually, and that will turn into better uh, investment, problem right? is better the, innovation. Problem is, though, that we haven't been measuring it that way for decades. It's just dollars. Yeah, we measure it by dollars. Yeah. The GDP grows. We're not going like, oh, do you think that was more innovation or spiritual awareness? No, no. no one's, <laughs> nobody yeah. is saying that. They're like, it grew by 10% yeah. from last year. We're spending more money. Yeah, the but, economy's growing. But remember, that also counts dollars spent by the government. So they could literally print a bunch of money and just spend it on anything and that goes towards the GDP. We oh, it grew by ten trillion dollars, and then you know, but the government took ten trillion dollars and bought, you know, pink, you know, cars or something because they wanted to. Like whatever they, if they just spend money, it goes towards it's GDP. bonds and securities and stuff. That's what they normally do to do that. And but again, if it grows the GDP by an X percent, that it, it again, that's I hear a, what you're saying. Yeah. And by the way, I don't agree with this economic theory. You know, I, I subscribe to the well. Money, money means something. It has to represent something. If it doesn't represent innovation or uh, production or efficiency, then it's just paper. So if we increase the amount of money that's circulating without any increase in production or innovation or anything else. All that means is everything is twice as expensive or whatever, that the cost of things goes up because there's nothing backing that money. There's no increase in innovation or anything else. Yeah, yeah. So that becomes a problem. And what happens is the people with a lot of power, the people with the most influence are people who obviously have lots of money, lots of assets, banks and stuff like that. And so for them, that's okay if they get all this money because they're not going to pay the big price for it until it starts to trickle down to everybody else. Like if, if let me put it this way, if the government printed out a trillion dollars and gave it to you just by yourself and you bought a bunch of stuff with it, you buy a bunch of stuff before it started to inflate, right? Mm -hmm. Before it starts to really have a negative effect. So, and w when they first did quantitative easing, it was in, uh, it was after the 2008 uh, crash or whatever. Is that when it, when it was? Yeah. Oh. And, and that's when, and then I remember people like Aust people who are like part of the school of Austrian economics or even, 
uh, like the Chicago School of Economics, Milton Friedman, you know, type people, they were saying it's not going to stop. They're never going to stop now. Now that they're doing this, they're never going to stop. Well, because it they worked. were right. No, um, no, I agree. And that's also why when we were discuss. Oh, again, it, it also circling back to our conversation, I want to make sure. I, I, and by the way, I appreciate this. I know I was teasing the the vaccine people, but I do appreciate <laughs> when. Uh, people DM, uh, talk, especially when you're smart and you and you have something to share and contribute to the conversation. Because yeah, I'm always open open minded, and if I said something that was wrong, I want to correct myself. Um, but the the other thing was the uh, oh Harry Harry Dent guy. Yeah, so oh, that, I know somebody's like he's been so, wrong all the time. Yeah. So <laughs> after you said that, I went home and like started digging deeper on him, and he's he's a very much so similar to like a Peter Schiff, where it's like doom and gloom for three decades in a row. It's like of yeah. course you're going to be right three times. You know what I'm saying? Like if you predict a crash and you've been saying a crash for 30 years straight every year consistently, like yeah. of course you know eventually it does. I don't think anybody's like denied. Nostradamus. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I don't think anyone's throws denying a bunch that. of shit yeah. out there. He's, One of them is correct. Yeah, so technically he's actually wrong more times than he's right. But yeah. they, they talk about how Well, he made a the- hard prediction, didn't he say like by June or July? Right. So that's mm. it, very ballsy to come out with a date like that and say oh, we're going to yeah. see this big crash. And I disagree. I just don't I think back to our point we're talking about right now, I think they have found out that we could just man, we could just print another couple trillion. I think they we will stretch the hell out of this. I think before we see a, a big crash, we will see a an even more ridiculous amount of money. Printed. I think we will see a, a number like five to ten trillion dollars in one shot. <laughs> They're not stopping, dude. No, <laughs> it's, just, it's this is so wild. It's funny it's, money now, dude. It's yeah. so wild. It's getting that point. And then I also saw I uh, was reading another article or listening to an interview. I can't remember which one it was. That uh, one in five homes, which is twenty percent <clears throat> of homes that are purchased right now, are like uh, you know financial entities or China that are coming in and buying like big investors. Yeah, so fine. Yeah. yeah, it used to be that the these in, cash offers everywhere. Yeah, and the investors used to mainly buy uh, multi-unit uh, homes like apartment complexes mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Now single single family. family homes typically they didn't touch right, but now you're starting to see them really jump into the single family home yeah, market. And, that, it's, and that's part of what it's obviously driving up these ridiculous prices that you're seeing, which I don't think is going to stop anytime soon. No. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm curious about that because I've seen it personally a lot because of, of what's been available. And then you see like everybody getting out bid yeah. and then these cash offers coming in like last minute. Uh, but I, I do think that there's some, sometimes you can you can actually write a letter, you can make a personal sort of note uh, to the person selling you know the house and, and you can actually like get some kind of connection there versus like if somebody's like selling their home sometimes they will consider like you're a family you yeah. live here it's not just like some uh you know Entity. financial group well, coming yeah. in well you know what the problem is the problem is is the way that people have retired and built wealth in the past is is changing and and so what we have in our head this is similar we had this conversation about college where it used to be you get a degree and that means that it's, it's a low investment because college was cheap and it's a, it's a great guaranteed way or almost guaranteed way of improving the likelihood that you'll make more money. Now that's not necessarily the case. It's becoming less and less the case, especially the cost of college going up. So it's challenging that old paradigm. Well, the old paradigm around retirement and investing was own your house, pay it off. And that's how people built their wealth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of ways to invest your money. And yeah. in, in some cases, it's not smart necessarily to own uh, your home. It might be smarter to rent your home and then use that money in other investments that are a little bit smarter. It's tough when you've been taught that as part of the American dream. Dude, I Mm -hmm. battle with it. No, I did too. I struggle with myself because that's my my dad literally hammered that into my my head. Mm -hmm. Always make sure you pay off your house. Always have, that's the number one. And he grew up the old school, you know, way or whatever. So that's the problem. So you you get all these companies buying and and renting these houses and people are like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to own my own home. There's a lot of ways to grow wealth and invest, not just that. Last thing I'll circle back on that we talked about the other day also was uh, the conversation that I had with Brendan over uh, Tonal. Mm. So he actually texted me yesterday. Oh, did he really? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, and it was a really nice text. He, he actually said, you know, I actually, I texted him first about something I don't remember. I think we were talking stocks because I do like to talk stocks with him. And he uh, he responded back to me, man. I was just thinking about you. I wanted to send you a, a really nice note after our you know aggressive conversation via mm-hmm. you know Instagram this now. And, and he went on to tell me how much he respects me and loves me, blah blah, blah all this mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I said, dude, the feeling's mutual. And I, I just what I what I really appreciate about him because we went we went pretty hard on each other on the yeah. like, there was no. Uh, there was no shortage. Yeah, gloves were off. Yeah, yeah, gloves were off. There mm-hmm. was definitely jabs and uppercuts that were thrown uh, with within the intelligent debate back and forth. 
And I said to him, I said, you know, I, I know you so well that I, I don't take that personally. And you're so you're just as competitive, as competitive or more competitive than I am. And I really look at it the same way as a, a wide receiver hitting a DB off the line or a get, catching an elbow when you're going to get a rebound. It's part of the game. It's part of the sport. And I, I don't take it personally and I don't get offended. And I actually really appreciate having that with another intelligent person that I completely disagree with. Mm -hmm. Like socially, economically, like we're, we're in polar opposites on so many views. But I think it's so healthy to keep people like that close to you. Totally. Especially if and it keeps you sharp too. It does. It, you know, it, either one, it, it either ch opens and changes your mind or mm -hmm. strengthens your argument. And I think it's important that you don't. And we're in this time of ghosting and blocking, and people you're getting so offended right. because you had a different opinion about something. Right. Like this was literally an investment conversation. Yeah. Right. And people get so mad that they lose friendships or they. Oh. And that's weak. You're evil opinion. if you have a different opinion than me. That's like where we've gotten to. It's yeah. really upsetting. It's to me, it highlights uh, weakness. You're mm -hmm. weak if mm -hmm. you can't like. If you're so weak that you can only be surrounded by people that agree with everything that you say, right, like yeah. uh, you're you're not going to do well. Something's mm. going to happen. Life Ideas is gonna need to be tested constantly. Did you guys see uh, the the exchange between uh, was it Neil deGrasse Tyson and uh, this this meat company? Uh, no. I, I, okay, it's, it's beef or something. I, I forget what it, what the the name of the company was, but basically, like they've they've kept checking Neil deGrasse Tyson's tweets all the time because I mean they're a little bit uh, um, uh, pretentious, if mm. you will. Uh, mm -hmm. So like he 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 wrote some tweet out there. Maybe you could pull it up, Doug, uh, it, between the two of them, the exchange. But um, basically, like he was saying something like like science. Uh, it is all it is always right uh, regardless of your beliefs or something like that. Like I, I'm to totally misquoting it, yeah. but but it's basically like and they're like, uh, no, that's not really how science works. You yeah. know, like science, you're always trying to to disprove and then see what's left standing. Well, okay, mm -hmm. catch me up to his stance. I don't know his stance on what what you're discussing right now. I so want to read this. Is, yeah, he, read, a hard, yeah, is yeah, he a hardcore vegan guy or what, what's his? No, no, no. It has nothing to do with the beef company. The beef company just checked him on one of his tweets that was about science. Yeah, read, read, that, read that tweet up there, Doug. What does that say? So he said, the good thing about science is that it's true, whether you believe it or not. There you go. And then what did they say? That's not true. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what they're. So yeah, if you go down, see. if you go down oh, that one right there, yeah, yeah, read that one. The ir irony of Neil's tweet is that by framing science itself as true, he's influencing people to be more skeptical of it in a time of unprecedented misinformation. Science is an ever refining process to find truth, not a dogma. No matter his intent, this message isn't helpful. Yeah. So that <laughs> that just reminded me of what we're talking about because right. it's you know like. That's the, the pursuit of, of of truth is really at the heart of it all and, and, and it needs to be tested. And science is continuously about like hypothesis and like testing the hypothesis to, to find law. And the only time it's true is when you find the yeah. law. You know, some of the worst uh, travesties uh, that humans have ever done to each other were done in the name uh, of science. You know, the thing about science, and yes, it's true if you find objective facts or whatever with through scientific study. That's true, but that doesn't make it right or wrong. Uh, science without morality is very, very dangerous. And, and you see this with the crazy studies that they did in the Soviet Union, Nazi Germany, even here, some of the studies that we did uh, on people to just in the pursuit of seeking scientific truth, um, we you know did some terrible things to people. And we still probably do, we don't know about. So uh, science is a tool but if you worship that tool, you better be careful. It's the greatest flaw in our industry. Mm. I mean, you see this every day in our space. It's one of the th biggest you know, things or problems that I have with our industry is that, you know, we we marry an idea because a new study came out or we find a way to monetize it. And so you, you become so dogmatic about it when the truth is that there's a very good chance that that, that theory or idea or that study ends up getting disproved in the next decade. Mm -hmm. So I can't stand that. I can't stand when we, we take something and then we build this whole thing around it. And it's like one study, one example of a group of people for a short period of time that went through something that proved an idea is right. 80% of the time. Right. Like that is not law. That is not fact. Mm -hmm. That is like a good, it's a good guess maybe in this direction, or maybe a good idea for us to investigate or look at or to consider. 
but it's not and we have to get away from this idea that and that's what you get uh, in a bunch of these intellects in our space that are PhDs and they love to sit here and debate each other oh, yeah, over, they argue the wrong stuff sometimes yeah they argue all the wrong stuff it's like it's splitting hairs conversations and we and you can see it's still prevalent in our space by the questions that we still get yeah. mm -hmm. how often are the questions we get it's just like god you guys that's you're, I, I, okay, you're so, asking the yeah, wrong I'm questions missing the point yeah no that's a great point Adam coming from a trainer right so with experience working with people if a person were to ask me what form of cardio is going to be best for me I want to burn body fat my answer is going to be very different from the researcher who researches cardio and for its fat burning or whatever calorie burning benefits if they ask the researcher the researcher is going to be like oh this form right here the data shows it burns the most uh, calories if you ask me the trainer I'm going to say to you the one that you like the most because as a trainer, I know the, the thing that we need to focus on is consistency. I don't care if swimming is more effective at burning calories than cycling. If you like cycling, do that one. Right. Don't do the one that the studies say. Right, right. This is the stuff that's uh, that's important that you're it's missed sometimes with scientific study. And you're right when they do the whole splitting of hairs thing. You know, 10% more fat loss if they ate, you know, within this window of whatever. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's stupid. Yeah. That's dumb. Speaking yeah. of science, um, I've been reading up on uh, some of the oils that are found in that Caldera lab, uh, oil that you put on your face all mm -hmm. the time. Why you look oh, so God, don't scare me Incredible. Here. No, good stuff. So, oh, okay. <laughs> April, he's like, by the way, the thing you've been putting- Actually, you're going to mutate. No, one of the- melt your face. No, one of the main ingredients- <laughs> They have that in the J&J &J vaccine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the main ingredients- going to go through uh, a whole metamorphosis. Is, uh, yeah. ap apricot uh, kernel oil is one of the main ingredients. Anti-inflammatory, good for eczema and psoriasis. Oh, no sh Okay, yeah. that's- Now, so, okay- I, I know you've been loving it Well, the, that. part- And I think I shared this originally, right? When, we, when I first started using it- I've actually gone away. So I have like a, like a prescribed cream that I have that I don't like to use. It's mm. like a like a like a mild steroid cream that I can use when my psoriasis. I knew you were on steroids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's on the road. Yeah, it gets out Double of enough. gets out of control. But I really try and uh, minimize that. Like I don't want to use it, and I really don't like using that on my face or my head. Mm. It's like you know I have some I have some really bad spots on my shin and stuff like that that you know if it really is bad and my diet's off and it flares up I might get it to tamp it down especially mm -hmm. if I'm wearing shorts, but uh, I have spots all over my head and, and face whether whether you can see or not. Um, there's like I have a spot here 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 back of my head, and the, when I started using Caldera, I normally I noticed it it damped it way down. Yeah. And so that is part of the motivation. Of course, I like how it, it makes my, my skin look more vibrant. It gives me this, like, I don't know, it look, feels like it shaves off a couple of years. But mostly it was the psoriasis thing. I noticed that when I was applying it to my face. So I've actually started to apply it to all the other spots. Now I just kind of piece that together. I did not know the, the research. Yeah. Behind. And then in a lot of the compounds in there are, <clears throat> are balancing. So this is why, like I told you guys, like I was always reluctant to try any oil because I have oily skin anyway. I'm like, I don't put oil on my face. I'm already, yeah. I'm already greasy. Well, oiled up. <laughs> yeah. So, but, um, it didn't do that. In fact, it actually made my skin less oily. And then you have Justin who's on the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. And you know, and yeah, it's pretty much will turn to dust yeah. you know, before your face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm just flaking everywhere. And it balanced them out, but yeah. it's, but it's got those, those natural compounds and stuff like that. Yeah. And, I, and I, even more, I want to use it even more after I keep reading, I, I'm going so deep into these chemicals that affect your hormones oh, and shit. I know, man. Dude, like, seriously, like I'm you like, alarmed the hell out of me. Yeah. Uh, and I've been, I've been really conscious of that too. Even soaps and like uh, shampoos, like, like the whole gamut of anything else that I'm oh. putting on my skin, dude, I gotta, I gotta well, really watch out. And you know what? Like I, I, I talked about this. We talked about this way long ago on the podcast. Like I'm not the type of person where I'm going to be like, uh, Super, and no offense to anybody's like this. That's hippie, crunchy, and it doesn't want to do any of that stuff. Like I, I like definitely I want, crunchy. I, but I, if there's areas in my life that I can just make a simple change, for example, not microwaving my shit in plastic. Like that's not like yeah. a, you know that's, that's not, not like, a big deal. It's yeah. not a big deal. It doesn't change that big. Soap. Like I'm not like a, a guy who's like married to a type of a soap that it's got to be this soap. Like yeah. if I can get a, a, a soap that doesn't have those chemicals in, it, why the fuck not? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of areas. Don't like, take my Axe body spray though. Yeah, okay. I'm not gonna be a guy though. You're not gonna be zest yeah. Yeah. fully clean. Well, I'm also not, and I'm also not gonna be a guy who's in a situation where I don't have access to that. That I'm gonna freak out. Right. That, oh my god, this one time I've got to use you know fucking Irish Spring or whatever. It's like it's not that big of a deal. But if I can if I can make these habits in my day where I subtle 
all changes. My laundry detergent, I'm not married to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All the soaps and the counter stuff. Like that's not, all the important stuff. Right. And then the other stuff is like uh, if you cook with nonstick uh, pans and stuff, mm -hmm. that's not good at all. Yeah. So don't cook with nonstick. Good like a, a skillet. Iron well, skillet. iron or you can use ceramic uh, mm -hmm. or they have some nonstick stuff that doesn't have those chemicals. But yeah, that nonstick material, they find that in like babies and their oh my God. breast milk. It's like so, it doesn't go away. Did you see, I tagged Crazy. you on uh, Connor's post. He posted about the video. Was that where you got it? It sounded like verbatim because you talked about he it. He talked about that that book that came out and I didn't listen to the whole video. What did he say? Oh, I mean, it was everything you said. So that's why I was like, you must have read the exact same thing because he's, I'm listening to it. I'm like, I think Sal said those all those words. It so blows my yeah. mind still with this guy. Like, I'm sure you read that that, that, that morning and I'm listening to someone else talk on this video and it was, uh, Aaron Brockovich. Yeah. Is that who it was? That's who they're... So the book was written by someone else, but Aaron Brockovich is that... She's like that environmentalist like attorney yeah. that does a yeah, lot of research. a movie about that. Yeah, the yeah. author of the book, I don't remember her name, it was something else. And she's the, the author of the book, the one, she's the researcher talking about all the stuff. Okay, so it, it came from the same place because I like listening to it. I'm like, oh my God, I thought it was literally everything yeah, Sal yeah. was regurgitating. Yeah, yeah. dude, you, you brought up Irish Spring. That, that's so... When you guys were kids, did you, did you guys take it home? Like when your mom bought... My mom bought that, right? So when yeah. I had it, Commercial. Yeah. The guy cuts it with a knife. Yeah, the Did knife. Did you guys cut it? Vain as a whistle, because Irish Springs green and white stripes have two freshening deodorants. Gets you fresh and clean as a whistle. I oh, I had to try that. I, I don't know why. Yeah, I got in trouble for that. Did you? Yeah, dude, because she bought it, and I'm like, oh shit. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know how old I was, like nine or whatever. You just and cut I, a massive chunk. I got my it. dad's sheetrock knife, you yeah, know, because it's really sharp. And I was uh, like, oh fuck, look at this. Yeah. Just cut it up. Want to see pieces. what this is all about? <laughs> my mom just blasted me. Yeah, <laughs> I got in so much trouble for that. Why'd you cut this up? Like the successful commercial. marketing, right there. <laughs> like they yeah. cut the soap at the commercial, uh, mom. I know. Yeah, it, it made it so obvious. Yeah, you guys ever forced to eat soap? For saying bad words. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, well, actually, the worst. Now that, now that we know all the chemicals and soap, thanks. <laughs> no, thanks, mom. Fuck. Um, yeah. D did you guys like? So the worst of it was I I had like the liquid soap that she put on my toothbrush. Oh, that's fucked up. I had to brush my teeth with <laughs> wow. soap. Wow. Yeah. Now, what did you say to do that? Why did you do that? I think I said fuck. That's it. He's, he's fuck something like ah oh, fuck you. Yeah. You know, like I was like a little angsty uh, kid. Uh, and, and I had enough, and then I paid the price. Dude. Do you remember how old you were? I don't remember how old I was. I don't know. Do if you? I had a guess, I was probably nine. That would be my guess. When you ate soap? Yeah. I think, I think, oh, really? Yeah, I think I got soap in the mouth for a time. I don't know. If I was like 10, only a couple, 11, only a couple times, though. Like that. that wasn't like a. It, and you know what's funny? Actually, if you figure out where, when I was not, when did the Christmas story come out? Everything oh, that was uh, yeah. that was eighty were, something. Yeah, you weren't even. I mean, it was, no, I was after born. that. I was born. Yeah, it was in were. the eighties. It was uh, it was early eighties. I want to guess eighty four would be my guess. Christmas story. So I wonder if like my parents watched that and I was like, oh, that's dude. A good I idea. said I said soap in his mouth. I said <laughs> stupid. I said stupid and I ate soap. That was uh, the word that I said. Wow. Yeah. Because my I, my mom you call your mom stupid. No. Okay. It would have been worse than soap. Yeah, you. I would have been. I'd catch a high heel. I would have been chewing my teeth. That's what yeah. I would have been eating if I said 83. 83. Good, I was wow. close. Huh? No, it was, uh, I said, she, she did something, and then under my breath, after, as I, I'm walking away, I'm That's like, stupid. Stupid. Oh, I remember Excuse one. Excuse me? Yeah, when I was, uh, I was fishing with my grandpa, and we were out on the lake, and he caught a catfish, and for some reason, he just hated catfish. You know, he could not <laughs> stand them. They're bottom, I don't know. They're bottom feeders. Bottom feeders. Bottom feeders. He's, he's like, I'm not going to cook this. I'm not going to yeah. do anything with it. <laughs> and this is going to piss off a lot of the uh, 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 not uh, what, what's the group PETA. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah it's going to piss them off. He 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 basically took it off the hook and was just like these goddamn these goddamn catfish. Bah, 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 smacks it and kills it. Throws it right back in the wow. lake. Right. So I'm just a kid. And I'm like, whoa, that was intense. You know. And we get back to the campsite and my brother did something stupid. He flicks me in the ear. Or whatever and i'm just like i was like god damn it stop doing that and then wow. like everybody turns their head over and they're like what <laughs> and i had to eat soap dude my cousin had to eat soap because he said dildo and he, we were like nine now how he didn't even know what that meant he heard some kids say it he didn't know what it was yeah and so he's just like singing a song it's a dildo there's a dildo <laughs> like, <fucking> dildo. <laughs> and i'm like next to him like yeah dude yeah dude dildo fucking dildo <laughs> yeah. And we got in That's fuck. the jam. We had to eat soap. Uh, <laughs> but they never told us why. Uh, Wait, why? What does dildo mean, Mom? Uh, Nothing. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. Anyway, oh, my so God. Like, hey, so you guys want to hear some cool... Did you Have you guys heard this before that 
people with red hair, uh, they need more anesthesia. Have you guys heard that? Yep. I did not yeah, know that. I heard okay. that. Uh, my mom is redheaded, so yeah, this is. She's a thing. ginger. Yeah, yeah. I so, don't know if that's that. So is it just specifically redhead? Because like, the, I feel like you know, there's there's more. Like I, I feel like uh, they they told me that I had a bit of that as may, well. Maybe so. I so I never heard this until I started training. Uh, I was I was a trainer, and I had clients that were uh, anesthesiologists. Mm-hmm. And one of them was talking. I was asking like, "Hey, you know, what'd you do today?" He goes, "Oh, you know, I had a case or whatever." Um, you know, he had red hair. So we, you know, we gave him a little bit more and I'm like, what? And I thought he was joking. Like, stupid. Why would you do that? And he goes, no, he goes, literally they require in many cases, 20% more painkiller to get the same effect. Yeah. Now is, it has is to that be, with Novocaine too? Because a, a lot of dentists had to like keep reapplying. <laughs> really? Me specifically. So yeah. it has something to do with, uh, the skin pigment. There's a, there's a, because of the pigment is a certain, uh, color, there are cells there that yeah. <laughs> yeah. no color. Yeah, it's absence of it. Yeah, there's uh, there's a cell there that apparently has to do with the fact that they how they perceive pain. Mm. This is true for redheaded mice as well. Oh, now weird. I didn't know there was redheaded mice, but I read the study <laughs> and that's what it said. I never seen. I'm redheaded totally mice. googling that after this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I it's, did not know it's that. true for them as well. Yeah, I mean, isn't that that's kind of you would think that's what weird. makes uh, them as fighters tough too. Redhead people, yeah, can they be able to tolerate? What, I more, don't know if it's they're pain. just fiery and pissed off. Yeah, I don't, it's, I don't know if it's like they could take more pain like that, or if it's pain killers. Oh, yeah. yeah so I don't know. We could try punching Justin. <laughs> <laughs> just you could try. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll punch you. Punch me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> more on the science tip here. So a cool study came out on uh, depression and how to treat depression. So check this out. Right, they compared drug therapies to treating depression to non-drug therapies like uh, uh, exercise, touch, uh, occupational therapy, that kind of stuff. I just heard Jordan Peterson say on uh, his interview with Jocko that uh, uh, resistance training is actually the number one form. Uh, for, for antidepressant? Yeah. Yes, it is. That's what it he is. said. And what it says here in the study is that exercise, cognitive stimulation, exercise, and social interaction, okay, were more effective than the drugs. That's, he said yeah. that that's also what would slow down um, cognitive decline uh, more than anything else. It's the only form of exercise that has been shown to do that. Yeah. It's the only form. Yeah, I thought that was and really cool. If you think cool. about it, it, this is my theory as to why, is because uh, if you look at dementia, Alzheimer's, I mean, they call Alzheimer's uh, type 3 diabetes, right? Mm-hmm. So they say it probably has to do with the brain's inability to, to deal with or process sugar. Insulin resistance is tied to it, is closely tied to it. And there's nothing that you can do that is better than building muscle by itself for helping your insulin sensitivity and helping your body deal with sugar. If you build more muscle, insulin sensitivity improves and you have a a larger capability to store and utilize and burn sugar. So this is why I think resistance training is the most favorable for things like Alzheimer's because it's not just the act of resistance training because you can, anytime you exercise and you're moving, you're improving insulin sensitivity, mm-hmm. but rather with resistance training, it's the after effect. It's the adaptation. You have a little bit more muscle. Now your insulin sensitivity is better and you can utilize sugar yeah. better. So it's again, one more, one more, more thing. More reasons. Shows, that's yeah. right. That yeah. Resistance training. So you moved us to science. I'm going to move us back over to controversy here. Um, what uh, did you guys see? Uh, Will Smith pulling his 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 next movie out of Georgia. Yeah, I saw that. So ex- explain this to me. So it's it, it's over the the voting laws. Yep. And it, what what did they put in place there that's different than everywhere else? I'm I'm unaware of this. I was also unaware that that Georgia was like. That that's like a booming uh, industry. Is they have a they have a ton of uh, contracts with like Netflix and a lot yeah. of that. Georgia's so uh, they're a swing state. So this this, this is going to be kind of a political hotbed, right? Uh, so to my knowledge, the voting law now is going to ask for ID mm-hmm. in order to vote, but it also expands uh, voting uh, booth access, allows people to vote earlier. Um, but anyway, nonetheless. Um, the, the, the people on the left say that asking for ID is racist for voting. They're calling it voter suppression. 
people on the right are saying, why is asking for ID yeah. racist? We should ask for ID because of potential voter There's fraud. There's just so many other examples where you need an ID for, uh, you know, you could just come up with a million. Yeah, I don't understand. the, the Now, now like, the truth is I haven't seen evidence of widespread voter fraud. I know there's lots of claims, but so far the evidence doesn't show that there's crazy voter fraud. Nonetheless, um, I don't get why these why it's racist to ask for ID. I don't know. I, I want to know. I would like someone to explain that better to me too, because that's why I was bringing it up. Because I don't. It never made sense to me. Yeah, because yeah, also too, it's like a very uh, that same uh, sort of group is then so vigilant about like IDs for or getting guns, right? And yeah. So what's where's I don't understand the difference there. I don't think. I think. Well, I feel. Like I think what they probably found is that asking for ID reduces their chances of winning so they're coming out with a political way to you know to to sell not allowing for ids mm. i mean who knows now uh, what i do agree with is that uh, even if that doesn't make sense and but it, it does align with your values or you do or so maybe you're somebody on the left maybe will smith is a liberal i don't know where he stands um, I do agree with the, hey, it's my movie that we're doing, and I know that's going to infuse mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. this, the, the. Well, I know the Major League Baseball pulled, uh, didn't they pull the All Star game or. Moved or, to Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. That was over, from where, though? Was that from that's Texas? From, no, it's from uh, Georgia. Oh, it was from Georgia also. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, wow. They're really trying to get them, huh? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting. It, you know what, the, you know, though? If you play this game, if you're a big corporation, and you start to play this game, you got to be careful. It's going to bite you back in the ass. Because if you're the NBA, okay, if you're the NBA and you're pulling games or whatever because you disagree with a, a policy because you say it's, you know, I don't know, it's oppressing people or it's discriminatory and you're, you're telling everybody, look, we're so good. And yet you do a shit ton of business with China that literally is putting people in, in, in camps like forced internment camps because they're Muslim right. or because they're Christian or whatever. Which is happening. You be careful because the same, when you start to do that, now you're open for attack and you look like a massive hypocrite. It's like when celebrities make a lot of money and then they go and because, because they need to be important, right? They go and they, they hammer everybody about their carbon footprint. And meanwhile, they own like a yacht and 10 houses and private jets on their own, right. it's like, dude, you're better off just shutting your mouth because right. then when you now you open yourself up for attack and you're not going to stand that test because you're you're a, a hypocrite on paper. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's the that's the issue I have with it. But I don't know. I mean, I, they're, they're free to do that, I guess. I saw one of you guys had notes on uh, Dr. Seuss too. What came out about? Yeah, him? I was you? actually. Gonna, it's totally non-controversial. Oh, really? Yeah, because I I was going to bring that up in a con like a controversial conversation. Be like, hey, here's something. Uh, so did you know that uh, green eggs and ham? Uh, I guess um, that it was actually uh, Dr. Seuss made a bet with his publisher that he could write a book within. 50 words. And that's how he did it? That's how he did it. Wow. And that's how and that, that, that book was created. And that's like his staple, uh, you know, most popular book. That happens to be one of the most popular books, too. Yeah. And he did it in just 50 He did words. it as like a bet with wow. his publisher. They could do that. Oh, that's, that's crazy. That's pretty, pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, we're reading the baby Dr. Seuss uh, every night. So we pull out the books oh, yeah. and read them. And are you? Yeah, and he's. he's Which one are you doing? Do you know what you're doing right uh, now? Uh, we did the one fish, two fish one. Yeah, the other yeah. night, and we're just picking random ones. And I, I'm doing the alphabet one right now. And I, what is that called? Like when you 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 put like five words that all start with the same letter, and you it, it's it's actually I like it because it's like. It's actually helping me pronounce words better. Mm -hmm. I know we guys we bust my balls all the time about pronouncing words really well, mm -hmm. but to actually read that book and read it with speed is hard to do, mm -hmm. and it and it's it's subconsciously training training even me to be uh, more verbally accurate when I say things. And it's uh, I forget what that's called. Is there a term? Like alliteration. alliteration? That's what that's called. I think so alliteration. Yeah. Like his he builds that into so many of his mm -hmm. stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's part of the brilliance that you don't even realize. You think the it's rhythm, just, the cadence of yes. yeah, like the the poetry of it. It's yes. really cool. I, I, mean, wow. I swear he's like one of the most brilliant writers ever. And the fact that you're you're getting to read which is also I think why it's something that I know he got, you know, beat up right over those handful of books or whatever. Right. 
but so much brilliant work that he's he's created for children. Yeah, I was. I well, they actually pulled it themselves. That was the whole thing. Yeah, they did. So yeah. it wasn't like yeah, the controversy came from outside. They just decided to. They pre it. preemptively canceled. Yeah, preemptively a books. canceled it themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was trying to read uh, my son Aesop's Fables. You ever read those? Mm-hmm. So uh, I was, but he's he doesn't. I mean, the book the book yeah, had yeah, like no pictures. Yeah, that's pretty. Far. He has to, he's five months right. He has to have pictures. So I'm like doing that, and he's like not interested. So Jessica's like, all right, let's grab the Doctor Seuss. And yeah, let's go through that. Max can, is continuing to go through these different phases where, you know, originally, because uh, I started reading from, I mean, we were reading to him when he was in the womb. So I, I started reading to Katrina's belly for uh, before he was born. Then he was born. And then, you know, he's com- he's like breastfeeding and I'm reading, like, and obviously not paying attention. And then I remember, and I can't remember exactly what month, but I do remember when he like, oh, wow, he like he, he sat in between my legs and, and wanted me to read to him. It was like the coolest thing ever. Mm-hmm. And then we went through that for a while. And then he got to a phase where you like wanted to tear the pages and do all sorts of that. Yeah. And then like, I'm trying to stay organized and like keep him reading through the books. And then, then he, he fell off that for a while. Then he actually got even more into the books where he wanted to turn the page. He was no longer tearing them anymore. And we're at this weird phase again right now where I can't read a book without him like knocking it out of my hands or like changing the book. Like I can't, yeah. I want to finish it all the way through. And he's like, he wants everything like, a, 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 and I don't know if it's like the, the novelty of something new. Yeah. Because he can't, he doesn't want to sit through the entire book. So he, want to see, he wants to see the picture, and then what's the next and picture? Just go. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. like, yeah, exactly. I can't read the page because he's like already wanting to turn it. Or give me another. No, no, not yeah. that book, Dad. This book right yeah. here. You know. No, right now, mm-hmm. uh, right now, my little boy thinks I'm the funniest person in the world for whatever reason. I'm like hilarious. So mm-hmm. we're just like, I'll just come home, and he sees me, and he's this. He Keep thinks, that, dude. He just <laughs> thinks it's so funny. Yeah. And and Jessica's like, I can't get him to laugh like that. I'm like, yeah, but you know, if anything else, he wants you. At yeah. least I'm funny. You know? <laughs> yeah. At least he thinks I'm hilarious. But that, you know, so we have a lot of fun with that. So Justin, yes. Uh, more UFO stuff. Oh, oh boy, really, bro? Every it comes out every week. There's new stuff. Oh, my so God. a new video came out of a. I stopped paying attention, dude. Dude, I, guess I gotta. I don't understand read your articles. I don't understand what's going on this year. It's like uh, in last year. It's like UFOs have exploded. Yeah. Uh, a pyramid shaped UFO video came out. Did you see this one? A pyramid now. Yeah, huh? it's like tra- like a they've triangle. had Tic Tacs. They've had like you know different shapes, uh, uh, like spherical ones. No, this was okay. like a it was like a triangle pyramid shape oh, wow. flying. And okay. then anyway, the Pentagon came out and confirmed the validity of the video. The Pentagon. The Pentagon. What is happening? I don't know, dude. We're they're preparing us for some where was shit. It, where was it flying over? I don't know where it was. I can oh, you don't know. Where it was. No. So this sounds a lot like Stargate to me, dude. You know, mm-hmm. like remember when they had the the was that Kurt Russell pyramid? This is such oh, a great yeah. movie. Are you yeah. guys kidding me? Yeah, that was, was a good, good movie. Was oh, good. so it, it comes down. It like lands like right on top of the pyramid, and then it like it beams them down in through mm-hmm. those uh, those shafts. And anyways, it, it it's just funny that like okay, so there's a UFO now that looks like a pyramid. Interesting. Very, yeah, yeah. Very no, very interesting. Can, okay, so this film was taken by the U.S. Navy. So it was the Navy that filmed it, and then the Pentagon came out. That's the last time a uh, uh, Fravor. Mm. Uh, 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 yeah, like speaking he, he was of Navy, Navy, did you guys? Do either one of you guys uh, finish listening Commander to the Fravor. Jordan Peterson and Jocko interview? No, how was that? Really good. Really? Yeah, yeah. Really, really. They, I mean, they got into uh, it was Jordan Peterson interviewing Jocko, which is funny because I don't, I actually don't, uh, I don't listen to Jordan Peterson's podcast normally. I was just interested in that conversation. Um, <laughs> he has such a hard time interviewing people oh he's the he's the interviewee yeah usually yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even and so i i well, can another guy who could talk forever yeah and, <laughs> I, and I imagine yeah. that I, you know and here's the thing though he's so brilliant it doesn't bother you sure, so you're yeah. like you're, you're you're almost always interested in what he has to say so i get that's probably why his thing is i'm sure his podcast is massive mm-hmm. uh but i could also see how you could get really annoyed if like you i'm there to listen you're to like, Jocko. wait a minute i thought i was the guest yeah <laughs> yeah dude 100 no, yeah. i know other people that probably come on the show are just like okay you want to do this or what now what are they talking about i heard you say something about morality of war yeah yeah earlier. so he, he really got into uh the morality of war and 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 really challenging jocko to articulate that for mm-hmm. him like what that that whole process has been like for him and you know jocko's a very very intelligent man and can is a great communicator and so to listen to him kind of uh, hmm. walk his way through that and explain his experience like everything from they like break down like rules of engagement like yeah you know i thought was an interesting fact I, I don't know that much about jocko being completely truthful and and this sh- I, this is good too. I should address this on the podcast because I get these DMs all the time. Like everybody wants us to interview Jocko and and um, uh, Goggins, right? 
And uh, truth be told, I'm probably out of the three of us the most resistant to it. And the reason why that was was I I worked for a uh, um, not a Green Beret, but a um, Navy SEAL. Uh, yeah, like, and he was completely like. That's how he he ran our team, mm-hmm. and I worked for him for many years. And you know, it doesn't mix well with you. It doesn't mix well with me. I'm not a, a yes sir man or do as I say and then ask questions later type of guy. And I just there's there's a, a ton of application uh, from from the knowledge and the books that all these guys have written and and the the way that they have applied what they've learned from war mm-hmm. into business. I I am not denying that there's a ton that I learned. Uh, but then there's also another side that not everybody that's working for you is signing up to be a soldier, mm-hmm. you know, and there, and there's, there's quite the art to getting everybody to move in the same direction when they don't want to be there. You know, it's like, there's a, there's a big difference, right. Or they don't care about saving their buddy, right. Like the, the army and the Navy, they, they do such a good job of like training these soldiers to be about the team and, right. and that, and that we're all here for this cause. The cost. stakes are so high as survival is that it's right. right. It's so it, it, there, even though there is lots of, of parallels with, with building a business and running a team, there's still a lot of differences. And because I had that for so many years. And I did, like I said, learn a lot. I tend to not gravitate to those conversations mm-hmm. very much. I'm just kind of like, uh, it's cool. Yeah. I'm cool with it. But oh. in his defense, uh, Jocko is a very, very intelligent, brilliant, great communicator. Um, and, I, and I love the way that he articulated like his thoughts on war. I thought it was interesting that he... Uh, he chose like in order to get to the rankings that he was at, he chose to go, uh, he had to go back to college. Like you have to have a certain level of degree to get mm-hmm. to the level that he reached as like a commander of seals. And, uh, he chose English as a major. And, uh, I don't know if that strikes you as odd when yeah, I was it is kind of Yeah. Weird. Like why? Yeah. Right. So and the reason is because of how much uh, in a leadership role in, in particular, them they have to be able to write and read. If you get if if anybody gets a promotion, filling out reports on everybody, you know? filling out reports, reading rules of engagement, challenging rules mm. of engagement, or direct orders from above, he goes, you can't just get something right because you get it, you receive it, you rules of engagement or your orders, you know, in mm-hmm. a twelve page document, yeah, and it's written by a bunch of you know litigious people, and then you're going, okay, oh, yeah. how do I take that information and then disseminate that down to my team and to get it done? And he goes, uh, and then when there's areas of contention, you know, how do you then articulate that back up the chain of command to get what you want to get and save your people's lives? Wow, that's yeah, interesting. I thought it was really interesting yeah. and, and how much that applies to that that position and how brilliant and for him to have that foresight to know that that would be something yeah, of value. What, what a difficult <laughs> conversation, the morality of war. Did you guys know that the, the, the Catholic Church actually has a war, I think they call it a just war doctrine. Did you guys know that? I didn't know they that. They actually have criteria. I did not know that. For what they would consider Is it to the be. the Geneva Convention that has like most of the rules? I don't or? know. No, no. I think they have what their own. That? Like, like this is the criteria for a just war mm-hmm. that they would consider. I thought that was very fascinating. That's interesting. Know, yeah, very I interesting I didn't that, know that they did that. Speaking of war, uh, huh. so who usually takes all the supplements? You. Yeah. But guess what? <laughs> you, have you guys wonder? have you wondered, Adam, why there's no more pure? This guy. Oh, pure? Hey, hey, man. This guy. All over, of it. Oh, now, oh, now the shade's coming All way. of it. We're yeah. out. I actually went looking for it yesterday. How many do you take a day? Well, I was I was consistent. You know, I was very consistent with it. It was helping a lot. And and guess what? We ran out. You know, like yeah. I You're gonna get stupid again. <laughs> I love that you, <laughs> I love that you transitioned that commercial from war. <laughs> it's fucking war. It's yeah, war in it's here. It's war over supplements. <laughs> I, I I take personal offense when there's a supplement gone. Yeah. I'm, like, yeah. I'm like the supplement guy, yeah. right? So I, I thought I was the only one like consistently using, especially on the pure side, because like you guys were talking about green juice and all that. No, I, I have think it. I'm fine. I, I had some I have some at home. Well, I was using right. it when when Sal was making it for us every every morning before. Adam only takes what I give him. <laughs> yes. He yeah. Take yeah. yeah. If he doesn't give it to me, I'm like, eh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Must not be that important anymore. You know? Just one of these times. But I have, ecstasy, seen, so. I have seen you. Can, yeah, can I would love to. Yeah. Could you imagine? He just goes in, hey, guys. Me, While we're ooh. podcasting. He's like, look, I know you're talking about a study right now, Sal. Yeah. Fuck, I love you guys. But man, you know, seriously. You don't even know how much I love you guys. Is this a new chair? <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm a good sport. If you do that to me, I'd be, I mean, probably initially mad, but I'd laugh later on. Just, you know? just yeah. sweating. Sweating in your chair. Hey, you guys want to just sit in the same chair? Yeah. Let's just all sit together yeah. on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our free guides. They'll help you burn body fat, 
build muscle, have a better squat, even become a better personal trainer. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from C Pickens 7. Does lifting to failure, bodybuilding style, tax the CNS like lifting heavy, powerlifting type maxing? The right. reason why you have to you have to put in what they wrote there because it it makes a difference, right? And and correct me if I'm wrong. I think that this person is uh, alluding to like bodybuilder style workouts tend to be uh, isolation exercises primarily. Mm -hmm. They don't do a lot of compound lifting where the opposite is true with powerlifting. Powerlifting is all compound lifting, yeah, right? That's okay. primarily power. Yeah. So, you know, when you train, uh, if you work out with any type of intensity or volume, there's always going to be a, a you're always going to challenge the central nervous system a little bit. And if you over challenge the CNS, it needs to take time to recover. And this can be a problem when you're trying to build muscle or improve or whatever your, your physique. Now, the main, the first part about lifting to failure. Now, here's the deal with lifting to failure. You know, when I was a kid, it was told to me, or at least I read in every bodybuilding magazine, that lifting to failure was super important because you need to work out intensely in order to send the muscle building signal. And because failure, because there was nothing beyond failure, except you could do like four reps and stuff. But other than that, if you went to failure, you know you went past the point of sending that signal. And in theory, it sounded good. Now, here's the deal. One of the most mind-blowing changes I ever made to my training was in my 20s, in my late 20s, where I stopped training to failure. And I did this because I started to look at strength athletes programming. Power lifters, Olympic lifters rarely ever lift to failure. They just don't do it very often. Oftentimes, going to failure is on the day of the competition. And I thought, God, I wonder if that will benefit me. I stopped lifting to failure, started training to intensely, but I would stop about two to three reps before I thought I would fail, and uh, my body just responded. The studies now support this. Studies now show that intensity, uh, that going to failure is too much intensity. It's too much intensity for most people. Occasionally going to failure is okay, so you know where it's at, but as a tool to get your body to improve, uh, it's too much. It's too yeah. much. It'll slow down your progress. I, yeah. I was kind of reading this question a little bit differently. Like, um, so in terms of like hypertrophy and, and, and trying to max out and, and going to, to the point of like pure fatigue. Like, so if I'm, I'm getting that sort of, uh, where, where my muscles feel like super tight and I can't even perform the rep anymore. And then I'm, I'm tired, I'm fatigued versus maxing out completely and going to failure, you know, doing a heavy compound lift, like a deadlift or, you know, a, a bench press or something like there's a little bit more of a dire consequence to one versus yeah. the you know, other. No, that's exactly how I read this. I read this as somebody is comparing bodybuilding type training, let's let and of course we're over generalizing this, but that is more like going to failure on leg press and uh, leg extensions. And leg leg extensions. Yeah, okay. Versus the the guy or girl who goes to failure on a squat or a deadlift, which one's more taxing for the CNS? Well, that's obvious, yeah. Well, it's yeah. obvious to us, but I think that's why they, this person's asking this question yeah, yeah. because there's a lot of bodybuilders. There's a lot of bodybuilders that that have incredible, you know, pro physiques that train to failure all the time, but they never do these compound lifts, mm -hmm. and this is part of why they get away with that. They get away with that because it isn't as taxing on the body as going to failure on a deadlift or on a squat. You can go to failure on a leg press and rec recover a lot quicker than you could doing that from a squat. That's true. Which though. is also true why you don't get as much bang for your buck, though, too. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's, you know, not all exercises, all you know, exercises are different. They're not all equal, and some give you better results than others, and some tax your body more than others. And isolation movements tend to tax your body a lot less. Than compound movement, so going to failure on an isolate on a bicep curl is not as bad, I would say, uh, as going to you know failure on a, on like a, a pull up, which both hits the biceps pretty well, but one is a compound exercise. This is mm -hmm. also how I would modify my training sometimes when, let's say, you know, because we we tend to you know push people in the direction of more of the bang for your best bang for your buck exercises like the compound lifts. So of course my most of my programming is built around that. But every once in a while I get I overextend and I train really hard. Let's say and my and I, I really get after squats and then I'm, my my hips are sore. But then here I am back two days later and I'm supposed to do you know front squats or something mm -hmm. else. This is sometimes where I go. Oh, I'm gonna leg press today. 
or oh, I'm going to do some machine work because it's here. less of a challenge. To exactly. Buy. So yeah. the, the, I mean, so I think the question's a good question if I'm if I'm receiving it correctly. That yeah, they they, they are different. Yeah. Um, but, and you know, back to what I was saying originally, I just think this is an important message. No, you're uh, right. You're right. For, for if you're listening or watching this. Tra- don't if you go to failure in your workout, stop doing that well, and watch what happens. You'll well, actually progress. Well, we've, it'll make a massive. Difference. We've talked many times before about paradigm shattering moments in our career. Uh, this was one of them for me. Like you, I went through a phase of leaving two in the tank. Um, I don't remember who I heard that from first or what got me to do that. But for a extended period of time, I said, okay, I, for so many years, I was the kid who wanted a spotter. Everything was to failure, forced reps, mm-hmm. because I thought that's what I need to grow. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this into practice and see if I go the complete opposite. What kind of? And I saw huge benefits from it. Yeah. Strength gains, muscle gains, mm-hmm. uh, and I had already been lifting for a really long time. So it blew my mind that it, that training that way. And don't forget too, when you get to those levels of pushing to failure, that's where the the, the risk also increases. Mm-hmm. So if I'm not going to get that much more gains from it. Or not, or not even as much gains from it, and then also increase the risk. Why would you almost right. ever do and, it? It and, should be something that you rarely do. Right, and then also low rep sets, even if they're intense, tend to cause less uh, stress on the body than higher rep sets. Uh, you know, it's within reason. So, if I do a set of you know squats and I'm maxing out at two reps, and even if I'm going to failure for two reps. It's actually not going to tax my body as if I was doing the same thing with 15 reps and going to failure on 15 reps. So you also have to calculate all the volume, and volume includes the total amount of reps that you're doing in your workout. So it's really important to understand that the right dose is best. That's what's going to get you there the fastest. More or less than that will get you there slower. And if you're a fitness fanatic, realize that your tendency is to try to do more. So always, in my opinion, err on the side of less, and you'll probably do better. Next question is from Helene Uska1. What are some exercises to help with knee pain? Oh, yeah, good old knee pain. You know, here's something interesting about knee pain. We actually talked about this before on the show. And and if you have our MAPS Prime Pro program, you'll find that we don't have Mm knee-specific mobility movements or exercises in the program. And someone might say, well, why? A lot of people have knee problems. It's because the vast majority of, of, of chronic pain that ha- that people feel in the knee is the result of a dysfunction from either the ankle and the foot or the hip. It's typically where you'll find the dysfunction. If the ankle, the foot, and the, and the hip are working really well and moving really well and strong and there's good mobility, nine out of 10 times, or maybe even 10 out of 10 times, there is no knee pain. Yeah, so, I go for well, it's a hinge joint. Yeah, uh, you know, its function literally is to extend and flex. You know, flex. And so, uh, everything else in terms of rotation and stabilizing, you know, you got to look at the hips or the ankle. Uh, and so, I guess that's why too we, we we direct a lot of the attention in there, which you know will reveal a lot more about where the dysfunction lies. I, I would go even further to say that it's always hip or ankle, unless uh, you have an acute injury. Right. So unless somebody you know literally tore a ligament in your knee or you know cracked or broke your patella some mm-hmm. shit like that if you didn't if you don't have an acute injury that happened in the knee but yet you have knee pain it is going to be the ankles and the hip or and or probably both because mm-hmm. many times yeah. if there is some ankle dysfunction that it's running up the kinetic chain and it's causing issues yep. or or lack of mobility in the hip so the answer to this the the exercises that would best suit this person and you know Sal alluded to Prime Pro, I address two of my favorite moves related exactly to this. And that, because knee pain is so common, that's why these two moves found their way into that webinar. Like I chose what I thought were some of the best mobility moves that helped most people that I ever worked with, with the most common things that they dealt with. Knee pain was extremely common. So the combat stretch for the ankle mobility and then the 90 90 variations for the hips, yeah. doing those movements will help alleviate. Yeah, I would say if you're pain. watching this and you have some chronic knee pain, probably. Good 70, 80 percent, you will see benefit from just doing right those two things. I mean, right. again, if you, just to illustrate, right? If you look at the knee joint and it, it it flexes and extends, there are ligaments that prevent it from laterally bending, right. and they're and from sliding forward and back, and from r- twisting. So it's it's kind of like it's, it's like, like in the all middle of a bunch of rubber bands holding it holding in place. it in place, yeah. allowing it yeah. just to flex and extend. Now, when you look at the hip or the ankle. They can rotate, they can move laterally, they can flex, you know, forward and back, they, all this kinds of all this movement, but mm-hmm. the knee doesn't. So if they're not 
strong and mobile and stable, uh, the ankles and the and the hips, then what's holding that knee in place are those ligaments. Yeah. It's keeping it from twisting. Mm-hmm. It's keeping it from it stresses and, them the hell out. Yeah, and you just over time, you know, you're, you're constantly walking, constantly walking, and your meniscus is always making sure that nothing's twisting because your ankle is so messed up or whatever because your hip isn't very mobile. Then over time, oh my meniscus has pain, or oh look, I have you know issues with my patella or whatever. It's and so it's usually always coming from those two areas. So I would say look there always. Next question is from Elfers215. Is CBD a positive post-workout or does it prevent the positive inflammation from resistance training? I know you guys promote CBD, but I'm just curious about this instance. Yeah, that's actually a good question, right? So the, the reason why they're asking this is when you work out, you send this inflammatory signal. You, right. you actually start to get a little inflammation. So you got into the conversation of, is inflammation really bad all the time? Right. And you need this, right? This inflammation signal is what tells the body to build muscle and to recover. Studies actually show that when people take uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, Often, they actually build less muscle, and over time, they actually start to get deg- degradation of their joints and stuff because it's too it's blocking the inflammation signal mm-hmm. too much. And Which so the body, promotes change. Yeah, so the body's like not doing anything to, to build muscle or strengthen because of it or doing less, right? So this question is, because CBD is anti-inflammatory, is that going to dampen the muscle building signal? Now, here's the thing with CBD. It's not nearly as anti-inflammatory as like – ibuprofen, right? right? Mm-hmm. So you're not going to get this super strong, acute anti-inflammatory response. It's kind of the systemic anti-inflammatory response that happens and you get a little bit when you take it once, but over time you start to see it. It also balances out inflammation. Now, will it reduce the muscle building signal? Maybe, maybe we're splitting hairs here, but the way it works is different and it kind of balances out inflammation. So I would say in some people, you might even see the use of cannabinoids help them build muscle. Um, so uh, as far as whether or not it's good or bad post-workout, I would say you're probably uh, splitting hair. Now, to take it as a workout performance enhancer and that kind of stuff, I w- think waste that's- Waste of money. I also yeah. think that's kind of- Yeah, I, would, I guess I would question uh, what is the desired outcome of even taking it post-workout? Like, why would that? I mean, the only thing I could think of is some, maybe somebody likes to use maybe it. Maybe think it has been promoted as a recovery aid. That's, oh, yeah, it, oh, that's a good point. That. There are a bunch of dum dums in our space that have been promoting it like that. You're yeah, right. Yeah. No, no. Okay. So I get, yeah, no, that's a terrible way to use it. I, you know, I think, you know, bringing down like uh, stress, anxiety, helping you sleep at yeah. night, gut issues if you're trying Chronic to. Chronic inflammation. Like, yeah. if you're fighting that in your gut or something like constantly, I think it's a great aid for that. But, like, yeah, in terms of like inflammation from, and stress from workouts like i don't really see much yeah of and you know in the, in the back in the day and especially in the 70s i know that uh the the bodybuilders of southern california it was a thing that they did post-workout as they all smoked, smoked a, a they'd smoke a joint they'd eat a big ass meal and then they go in the sun and then they go lay out in the sun yep um and i mean i know they're all genetic freaks and on on steroids and stuff but they were so attuned to their body they did a lot of things right back then. i'm sure sure. they would have stopped if they said oh wait i think this is making me you know lose muscle they would all have a like i said a joint post in that famous scene from pumping iron right when arnold at the very end he's got the shirt that says (laughs) numero uno arnold's numero uno he's hitting a joint so next question is from tw parker 34 are gummy bears for real as a post-workout snack? Oh this is, God. is, I hate is this, this a gym uh, follower? Y- you know what? No, it's become way more popular than just that knucklehead. I mean, it's yeah, yeah it's become a thing that I mean, and just you're right. Now that you guys, you know, we just answered the CBD one. You're right, Justin. I have seen uh, quite a few fitness influence because CBDs become so so popular in our space mm-hmm. and that you've got a lot of these you know they're just trying to find more angles of how to sell yeah, it yeah and they don't understand the science behind it or really how to use it and so it just makes the most sense to pitch it as a post workout yeah. i have seen that now yeah. and, and the gummy bears thing as has been popular for a while now and more and more people are jumping on the this bandwagon. Is, okay this annoys the shit out of me so this this is based off of science it's off the shows. dextrose mm-hmm. yeah if you eat a, a fast digesting form of carbohydrate post-workout, you'll replenish glycogen stores faster. Then they also say, oh, getting an insulin spike post-workout is a good idea because it helps build muscle. Um, yeah, okay. Again, we're, we're splitting hairs to the point where it doesn't even make sense anymore. And honestly, this is an excuse to, <laughs> to eat gummy bears. justify <laughs> eating shit. Yeah. 
post workout. So it's like, oh no, I'm yeah, I'm a fit guy. Oh, of course, I want to improve my performance. So this is and that's why I'm eating a bag of candy. Do you think Hasbro's behind? Well, this? The, yeah, right. The, the thing, the reason why I or actually Haribo, I get or Haribo, uh, yeah, 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 wrong, wrong yeah. guy. <laughs> Hasbro makes toys. Yeah. The reason why I I, I got uh, so fired up when this first started getting popular was because, um, you know, I I battle with sugar addiction, and I would have loved. To, Any excuse. Oh, if so, if this was popular when I was twenty, mm -hmm. I would have been this kid. I, that's all I needed to hear was some PhD fitness guru mm -hmm. telling me that I should you, I should consume gummy bears because they have a ton of dextrose in them and this is going to make the anabolic window even better or speed up my recovery. I would have jumped all over that. And the the truth is, like at one point, if you're somebody who is constantly eating candy like this, you'll be in the same boat as I am. Like back when I was 20 and I I could eat whatever I wanted and not put on body fat, and all I cared about was how I looked, and I didn't care about my overall health, and I didn't think like, oh, one day I'll be 40 and not running around mm. 15,000 plus steps every single day and a roaring metabolism. And now here I am battling this sugar addiction that I have allowed myself to have. So I hate this advice. Even if you can get away with it as a young guy or girl right now to do this, it's terrible advice from fitness professionals that are pushing this. I think it, you're stupid for doing yeah, that. Yeah, if you mm -hmm. want to eat candy, then go eat candy. But if you're going to yeah, say don't, don't that it's- Don't wrap it into the whole process. If you're, yeah, if you're going to say that it's because it's good for your fitness- then I'm going to be pissed off because that's not, no, it's not true. It's the wrong it's message. Wrong. Look, yeah. look, do you, re okay, first of all, replenishing glycogen post workout, not that big of a deal unless you plan on working out again mm -hmm. right away. And by the way, starches do just do a damn good job. Yeah, have, a fucking potato. Have, you have a bowl of, <laughs> yeah. have a bowl of rice and freaking eight ounces of steak or chicken. Yeah, there no, can't, th this is dumb and it's, it's totally a way to justify eating garbage. It doesn't benefit you. You're not going to build tons of muscle. Uh, doing this or burn more body fat doing this. It's not going to do anything for you. You're just eating uh, yeah, a fake food post-workout. You like gummy. I love gummy bears. It's my favorite candy in the world. Okay. Don't get me wrong, but it's not a post-workout uh, snack. That's yeah, save it complete for save it, the cartoon. Save like, it for the, you know, once every six weeks when you go to the, on a movie date and you really want to have gummy bears. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. The, don't, don't justify it as a, a ritual and a behavior that you do every after every workout. Totally. And That's then as far as idea. spiking your insulin to improve muscle growth, I mean, yes, I know pro bodybuilders take insulin and they take it with carbohydrates and that helps them build muscle. Okay, I get that. Very different than trying to spike your insulin with sugar, which uh, you, you don't want to do that all the time. It doesn't make any sense to constantly try to spike insulin to build more muscle. You don't. You want to be very sensitive to insulin. You don't want to have to spike it all the time. And whatever, you're not going to gain any really muscle from doing that. Not to bodybuilders injecting insulin is totally different. Which also, by the way, is not a great idea. But that puts muscle on. But they're injecting it. That's totally different. Not to mention the behaviors that come behind this. Okay, you eat gummy bears every single day. A fucking apple is going to taste bland. Your mm -hmm. vegetables will taste terrible. That's what happens. So you don't want to get in the habit of doing something every single day. And I'm speaking from experience. I'm telling you that, that this was me. I was a kid who ate candy every single day. And for the longest time, I didn't think that apples and grapes tasted like anything. I hated vegetables. So what, that's what you're messing with, all in the in the, the name of getting an insulin spike. Like, get out of here with yeah. that. It's yeah. terrible and, advice. And by the way, it's if yeah. they're saying it's sugar, right? Why is it gummy bears? I don't know. They focused on gummy bears. Technically, according to their their theory, it could be any sugar. It's well, no, fast, it's though, dextrose. Yeah. It's yeah. dextrose. Yeah. And gummy Pixie bears. Pixie sticks. It's, gummy yeah. bears, I think, is one of the candies that has like the highest level of dextrose in it. That's the reason mm. why they promote gummy bears. I love gummy bears. Look, if you like our content, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. We have lots of free guides there you can download. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. So where does the injury come from? Okay, injury comes from weakness. Injuries come from weakness. Now, whether it be stability or in a range of motion, There's they didn't kink own. in the chain somewhere. And, right, and that's where the injury happened. So what a warm-up should do is improve your strength and your function. That's what reduces the risk of injury.